Hi everyone, uh, welcome to today's webinar with me, Fawad Razakzada, and uh, my colleague Victor, um, who has... Greetings. Hi, hi uh, Victor, how are you doing mate? Yeah, very good, very good. Uh, excellent, excellent. Pretty keen in uh, seeing this report. Yeah, likewise, um, I, I, I can't wait for it to, um, to, to, to come out because um, obviously um, the Fed has... Um, you know, they, they have started to provide the strongest hints yet that uh, tapering QE could start before the end of this year. And um, the recent jobs reports have been great. Um, so, you know, we, we'll have another one or two, at least one or two uh, jobs reports before the Fed decides to provide the timeline for tapering QE. And that makes this uh, particular jobs report very important in so far as the Fed's policy is concerned. Uh, so we should see some uh, major market moves uh, if the data comes in um, well ahead of expectations or well below expectations. Um, but we'll get into that in a minute or so. Um, but uh, just to provide you um, an overview of how this webinar is uh, scheduled, it's in two parts. Uh, the first part, uh, we will discuss some pre-NFP leading indicators to try and come up with a rough idea of how the headline jobs number may look like and how this will um, or this might impact the markets. And the second part will all be about technical analysis of a few major currency pairs, gold indices, um, in order to provide some actionable trade ideas after the jobs report is released. Don't forget to ask us questions, guys. Uh, we like it when it's a, a live room. Um, I know there are a few of you um, in this room today. So thank you so much for joining us. And uh, for those of you who are watching a recording of this, um, please consider joining us live next time because uh, that way you can ask us questions and the webinar can be more interactive and so on and so forth. Now, before we begin, please uh, have a read through this. These webinars are for general information only and are not intended to provide trading or investment advice or personal recommendations. Any information related to past performance of an investment does not necessarily guarantee future performance. Think markets shall not be responsible for any loss that you incur either directly or indirectly arising from any investment based on any information in this webinar. Please remember that the spread betting and trading CFDs carry significant risk and may not be suitable for all investors. Right. So we've uh, discussed this already, but just a quick reminder, uh, the NFP preview webinar is happening every month, first Friday of the month. And uh, it's all um, um, to do with the jobs report. So we'll keep the focus on the dollar pairs and indices and so on. Whereas the um, weekly webinar series that we do on Tuesdays at 11.30 London time, that one is kind of broad based and we talk about um, all sorts of markets. So if you have any questions um, in this webinar, please keep it, uh, keep it um, relevant to the NFP and, uh, and, and the Fed's policy, please. Um, but yeah, as I said, we, we will have a Q&A session at, uh, at the end of the webinar um, and uh, we'll obviously share some live charts to uh, discuss some key levels uh, and so on. So the Nampon payroll, payrolls report um, is uh, important because of so many reasons. Um, firstly, um, traditionally, it has been one of the most kind of eagerly anticipated macro events for the markets. Uh, it's because um, employment is um, one of the Fed's two mandates. You know, they um, want to maximize employment. The other mandate is obviously to keep um, inflation around the 2% average target. So the U.S. economy has recovered very strongly from the pandemic. And um, Jerome Powell, the Fed's um, uh, chairman, and several other Fed officials have uh, more or less confirmed that tapering QE could start before the end of this year. Um, so investors are currently uh, speculating that the Fed may announce the timeline for the process of tapering at the FOMC's um, uh, September, um, sorry, not September, October or November meeting. I think it's gonna be in November. So until then, the Fed will have uh, had three more jobs reports, including today's, to consider before publishing its plans. Um, this makes the, today's jobs report very important and it will be scrutinized closely by the markets, uh, which means uh, we may see some sharp moves in, in response. Okay. Now, um, in terms of um, the Fed's policy, the, the markets have had uh, enough time to digest the Fed's slow buildup to the eventual uh, reduction of QE. 
Um, so this means that tapering QE is no longer going to surprise the market when it comes. At least it's not going to impact the market in a meaningful way, I don't think. The yeah, Fed has we also have been, already yeah. seen that actually uh, after Chairman Powell's speech, uh, the rally in the dollar fizzled and uh, basically yeah. the, the market is now refocusing uh, to yeah. its attention onto other central banks, uh, yeah. which typically follow uh, what the Fed does. Uh, exactly. Let's see how how that goes, because uh, yeah. uh, for, for the time being, um, uh, just the other day, or was it yesterday, we saw some, uh, well, we saw a typical hawk on the ECB, if I'm not mistaken, uh, it yeah. was... Uh, uh, a, G- a German uh, member of the ECB who who said that uh, the ECB is also looking to uh, reduce monetary stimulus. Yeah, I'd be surprised, frankly, if 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 they do because yeah, the the Germans are way ahead of the curve. Uh, but uh, yeah, this is something that uh, the, the you guys should be keeping an eye on. Absolutely. I think that a couple of investment banks have uh, started to draw the timeline for uh, when the uh, ECB's uh, uh, pandemic, um, uh, what do you call it, pandemic emergency uh, purchase program. Purchase or program. The, yeah, yeah, or the PEPP uh, program will end. And some of them have indicated that it could end as soon as March of next year. So yeah. that's something to keep an eye on that could uh, provide further strength for the euro. And the euro has been going um, higher in the in the last few days. So um, it, this uh, kind of, you know, to bring the focus back to the NFP, if, 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 if we get a disappointing data uh, set of data today, then the euro dollar is probably uh, the, the, the chart for you guys to, to, uh, to focus on because of the strength in eurozone data of late and the fact that the, some of the ECB officials have turned hawkish. We'll come back to that in a minute or so. But, uh, you know, going back to the discussion in, uh, in terms of the Fed policy, um, I think what the markets will want to know next is not necessarily when tapering QE would uh, start, but how fast it will be. So this will yeah. be influenced directly by incoming data from the world's largest economy, the US, um, as well as inflation indications from around the world, such as uh, any sharp changes that we see in crude oil prices, in gas, um, in natural gas prices, or container shipping rates, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so keep uh, a very close eye on data in the next uh, few months because it's going to impact how fast tapering um, will be and um, what that will mean for the future part of uh, monetary policy in the US and other major global central banks indeed indeed yeah uh, so um in so far as this uh, jobs report is concerned the the markets are well economists are expecting a headline uh, nfp print of uh, around 720 um or so um expectations have come down a little bit uh, last week uh, expectations were centered around 750 uh, or a bit higher than that but the whisper number or the so-called whisper number has been declining uh, because of um, some indications about the um, that, that some some of the pre NFP in the indicators that we've seen have been a little bit on the weak side, so analysts have been revising downward their expectations about this month's uh, uh, headline jobs report. Um, so um, a print of seven hundred and twenty thousand would still be a, a good a good figure, I think. Um, although it would um, represent a sizable decrease from the nine hundred thousand plus readings that we have seen in the previous couple of months, the unemployment rate, rate is expected to de- uh, have declined a little bit more to five point two from five point four percent previously. And um, in terms of wage inflation, average hourly earnings are expected to have risen by zero point three percent month on month 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 on month. Um, after climbing by 0.4% in the previous month. Will these uh, expectations be met or missed is the key question. And more, uh, more importantly, how will the markets respond is, is, is what you guys want to know. So let's discuss this in a uh, you know, greater detail. Um, in, in so far as the headline jobs report, uh, you know, we, we look at a few pre-NFP leading indicators and um, you know, in, in trying to come up with a rough idea how the yeah. jobs headline may look like every month. And you may notice that the ISM services P- PMI employment component is not listed here. Uh, this is because this will be released 
after the after job's report. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, well, so, Victor, this makes it makes it a bit harder to predict um, the <laughs> NFP headline, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, well, uh, what we what we know so far is that uh, well, there is an important uh, caveat to this report. Actually, yeah. that uh, this is the the last month when we're getting these extra unemployment benefits. Right, right, right. Uh, and, um, uh, and you know, the, some people might have uh, already been, uh, <laughs> you know, aware that, okay, they have uh, enough money to last through another month and maybe it's now time to start looking for work because... Yeah. Um, you know, the pandemic uh, relief uh, unemployment benefits are expiring. Yeah. And it's, um, you know, something that is quite, um, uh, could influence this report quite a lot. And the mm-hmm. fact that we have a negative print on the ISM manufacturing uh, employment component, uh, negative meaning 49, just mm-hmm. below 50. Um, yeah could actually still be due to the fact that uh, um, job uh, um, job seekers have not been very active in the market. So, yeah, I don't know how this plays out. Uh, we have some uh, very unpredictable uh, compo- components to this report. And uh, um, I, 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 as of the past couple of months, we have seen uh, employers struggle to hire people because people were not actively seeking for work yeah. and the um, um, labor force participation rate is nowhere near levels, pre-pandemic levels. Indeed, indeed. That's a really um, interesting few points that you've made there, um, Victor. So, so yeah, watch out for that, guys. Um, just a second, uh, HH Hassan asked a question. Could you reflect on company's response? Uh, May sectors in general. I'm sorry, but I'm struggling to understand. What do you mean by company's response and sectors in general? Do you mean which sectors are most actively uh, looking for for? job like uh, hiring people or could you clarify your question a little bit okay um uh, victor i can't see the chat window uh, for some reason can you see it i can see the question as questions and answers box but uh, we we used to have a chat window uh, with zoom but uh, that yeah, looks like maybe, it's disappeared maybe it's an update yeah i don't know okay Anyway, uh, so so yeah, you can ask us questions in the questions and answers box. Okay, uh, the chat yeah. uh, feature has been disabled for some reason. Um, so yeah, the um, as as Victor mentioned, we had the uh, employment component of the ISM manufacturing P might come in negative. Uh, ADP also disappointed. ADP is the private sector payrolls report, which comes in a couple of days before the official jobs report um, is uh, released. Uh, ADP um, reported that uh, employment rose by 375 or oh, 74,000 um, in the month of August, which was half, nearly half the, the amount expected. Um, and so that's another negative aspect, but uh, the, uh, you know, unemployment claims have been falling, uh, but right. that's, that's, you know, you have to take that with a, with a pinch of salt. I think, uh, uh, yeah. yeah. Is, uh, okay, like I'll let you explain why why should we take it with a pinch of salt? Yeah. <laughs> First. <laughs> um, so so there you have it uh, um, in terms of the pre-NFP uh, leading indicators um, are concerned. Whatever the headline jobs report uh, is, uh, obviously don't forget to take into account the average hourly earnings figure as well to gauge the health of the labor market and more to the point uh, on deciding on a trade to take after the yeah. jobs report is published. So obviously you need to see um, both uh, wages and employment, um, you know, they go in, in, hand in hand, uh, so to speak. So we have uh, quite, uh, to sum up, we have a quite high consensus expectations yeah. uh, number. And uh, yeah, so 720,000 jobs. Yeah. Well. 
if if we get a, a a million jobs that would be quite a surprise it will be yeah yeah <laughs> but, so 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 are you uh, saying the risk are uh, note that this is august and it's yeah. a post pandemic august so people were very very actively um going places and um the service sector must have been booming uh during this month i i just can't imagine it otherwise seeing well, uh, what has been going on around here yeah. i don't imagine it's much different in the us and uh we could see a crazy a crazy number so yeah don't wow, don't okay, exclude um, this yeah i mean uh, that could be a possibility I, i was actually thinking that you know with the covid situation in the us being a little bit worse than uh, in europe that that might may have actually impacted the services sector um and in turn employment so for I, me actually uh, yeah yeah i i was going to say that uh, for me the risks are skewed to the uh, to the downside that we may actually see a disappointment uh for this month because of the covid situation uh yeah. even though well, it's august yeah it's uh i i just think that uh the us population has proven that it doesn't care about covid anymore Yeah, yeah, that that that's another good point as well to make. Uh, <laughs> so, but yeah, well, and, let's see. And so far as um, the trade ideas are concerned, so th- this is how how we're going to play it, okay? Um there there are three scenarios basically. And if P comes in well ahead of expectations, comes in well below expectations, and um and if P comes in broadly uh, in line with expectations. So so those are the three scenarios. Now, let's take these in turn. If 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 an NFP trounces expectations, it comes in Uh, as Victor says, uh, you know, a million plus or something. In that case, um, there is no doubt in my mind that the dollar yen is going to rally. Um, so I would look for the long dollar yen setups, and perhaps uh, shorting gold may may m- make sense because gold is priced in the dollar, and uh, a very strong jobs report may also lead to higher yields because investors will be expecting um, the Fed to taper its uh, QE program sooner and uh, faster. Than was previously expected, uh, that might weigh on on the price of gold. Um, so 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 that's how uh, those are the two kind of plays I would look at. Um, but um, paradoxically, um, a very strong jobs report uh, obviously um, is is good news for the economy, but maybe bad news for the stock markets because you know stock markets are. Um, they are high on stimulus, <laughs> so to yeah, speak. Yeah. Um, and uh, if, if the jobs <coughs> data comes in really, really strong, um, people will be uh, kind of uh, it's, it's, it's speculating that the Fed may have to uh, taper QE sooner and sharper, therefore um, reduce the appeal of the stock markets that have been driven primarily by um, stimulus in the US. So... Yeah. A, a very strong jobs report may not be very good for the stock markets. Um, if NFP comes well, in, most certainly. And yeah. uh, H H Hassan is asking, uh, how would the different sectors react yeah. to the NFP figures? So he clarified yeah. his question. Oh, okay. So, uh, so yeah, this is this is what uh, I want to emphasize that you have just said, mm. and in response to H H Hassan's question, sure. that. Uh, Uh, actually, if we get this kind of blowout number and the confidence in the Fed moving uh, starts to increase, uh, and obviously, like the the more the more uh, employment growth, the faster the Fed is going to pull out stimulus. Yeah. So um, that could actually be negative for the stock market uh, in general. As to sectors, I imagine technology, technology would be the biggest, uh, uh, the hardest hit. Yeah. If we get a sell-off, so yeah. Because the um, uh, technology sector, just to clarify on that point, uh, technology sector, you know, stocks. if you look at, yeah, they 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 are uh, growth stocks. They have been um, rising because of people expecting them to grow, obviously, uh, but they have very low yields. Yeah, um, and uh, so Or people, no. yeah, uh, so so people will 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 be more inclined to um, invest in fixed income rather than um, pe- by people I mean uh, yield seeking investors 
than, than, than those kind of stocks. Uh, but it could uh, uh, provide some support for stocks that rely on economic growth. Um, so value stocks, um, uh, you know, oil majors and, and so on. Um, the other scenario is um, obviously if um, NFP disappoints really, really badly. In that case, uh, we'll do the opposite of what, what we just said. But instead of uh, concentrating on the yen, I would go short the dollar against the euro. Um, as you know, we discussed the at the start of the webinar, um, officials from the European Central Bank have uh, become hawkish. And we've yeah. seen improvement in Eurozone data uh, of late. Although today we had a disappointing retail sales figure. But uh, other than that, it has been overall a very positive um, period for Eurozone data. Um, so um, pound, New Zealand dollar or the Euro could be the currencies to, to, to trade against the dollar. In the event They're of already uh, rallying this morning. Uh, yeah. Well, actually, they've been rallying for a couple of weeks now. Yeah. The Aussie and the Kiwi uh, have been leading the charge against yeah. the US dollar. Uh, the Kiwi rebounded uh, 300, over 300 pips uh, from a bottom around 68. Yeah. Uh, posted exactly 10 days ago, if I'm not mistaken. So, yeah, uh, yeah this is uh, something to watch out for. Uh, the commodity currencies are picking up steam pretty, pretty violently, I would say. Yeah, yeah. Uh, abruptly, uh, the, these, these uh, sharp reversals across the dollar pairs that happened in the run-up to Powell's speech and yeah. after his speech are continuing and we're seeing very, um, you know, the, the market returning to its uh, dollar selling dynamic that yeah. we have been observing uh, throughout, uh, well, until, until about the start of the summer. Yeah. You know, we, we're, we're talking about the dollar. We might as well just... Um you know, look at the dollar charts now, starting with the dollar index. You can yeah. see that, um, you know, this is the second week of um, the dollar index falling and much of the falls have been uh, due to yeah. uh, strength in the euro. Um, we had the... this uh, uh, rally in the, in, uh, in the dollar since June yeah, and it lasted for uh, three months, June, yeah. July, August. And then well, now we're starting to... Uh, reverse yeah so the dollar index has broken its bullish trend line um and it's taken out previous uh low at 92.50 ish that area is going to be uh, resistance now isn't it so um if we get a small uh, pop uh, in the dollar index in response to a somewhat positive uh, u.s data we could then see um renewed weakness come in uh, once uh, the um, dollar index uh, yeah. retests this uh, broken support. As I was uh, emphasizing during our uh, last uh, weekly webinar, the, the, the positive news for the dollar, I think at this point, have already been priced in. So, yeah. Um, so so yeah that that's the key level to watch uh, the, the charts you know we, we haven't updated the charts from the previous webinar so uh, I do apologize about that uh, but we, we are uh, updating them live as we speak so um, the 92 47 50 level is going to be very important uh, insofar as the um, dollar index is concerned if I uh, create another level here um, this level right here uh, the uh, low from uh, from th uh, Wednesday uh, comes in at 92.37. So between 92.37 to 92.50-ish um, is, is where I would expect the dollar to find, uh, to come under pressure if we get a, uh, 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 you know, a, a jobs report, which is not too strong. Um, if it's too strong, then we may see um, price break through this area and then create a bullish reversal. Yeah. Otherwise, the path of least resistance is to the, to the downside. And that's the key area to watch on the dollar index. Let's look at the pairs now in turn, um, starting with the euro dollar, because we've spoken about it. Uh, um, we had previously highlighted this level at uh, 118 um, as yeah. a, a turning point, because that was the last high 
prior to price breaking below 117. Um, it broke below 117. It didn't hold, um, and it then uh, it, it it bounced. It found support from the um, trend of the following wedge pattern before bouncing back, and it eventually reclaimed 117 and 117.50 resistance before taking out the previous high at 118. It has now created a higher high. So as yeah. things stand, um, the part of these resistance is to the upside. If we get some weakness in reaction to the data, um, uh, for as long as the data is not too strong, I would expect the euro to continue higher. Yeah, so note that uh, the yeah. key uh, support line in, in, in the line in the sand would be the 118 level once again, 118, 118, 05, 10. This is uh, an area that could be uh, harboring bids uh, because uh, the options level is could, could be uh, um, protected. Uh, the 118 level option players could be yeah. bidding up prices there. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, this is uh, the line in the sand. If we break through that, maybe uh, in that case, uh, it, we we could see. But yeah, the number the the number for for this to happen, the number needs to be really crazy. <laughs> yeah, like a, a million plus, perhaps. Yeah. yeah. Um. Um. So. From here, um, to me, it looks like you know if if, um, if the euro strength continues. Um, also, note um, Wednesday's high because that level corresponds with the dollar index as key level, isn't it? So Wednesday's low comes in at ninety three thirty seven on the dollar index, um, and on the euro dollar, Wednesday's high comes in at uh, one eighteen fifty ish. So that could be uh, a potential support level. Um, Obviously, yeah. in the event that the data is not too strong, so from there, from around there, we could see the euro uh, start another uh, rally and uh, take us above uh, liquidity pool resting above 119. By liquidity pool, I mean uh, stops that would be resting above 119 because uh, it looks like the sellers are trapped right now. Uh, so, um, if 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 we're reading price action cor correctly, then the market should be going to where um, trap traders' stop loss orders are resting. Um, so area above 119. Thereafter, there's nothing significant until 120 handle where we also have the 200 day moving average converging right on the money. So that could be uh, the upside target in the near term in the event, especially in the event that uh, jobs data disappoints expectations. Shall um, we move on to the pound then? Yeah, sure. Let's go to the pound. The pound is not as strong as the euro at the moment, although yeah. it, it never gave back uh, a significant chunk of its prior gains. Um, well, uh, we're trading just around the 200 day uh, yeah. moving average, and this is uh, this is something of note. Uh, yeah. Like the uh, if if we close below that, I, I would see the the pound weakness relative to the dollar yeah. and perhaps to the euro uh, persist. But uh, yeah. This it's trying to break uh, through this trend line as well at the moment. Uh, yeah, so let's yeah, see what, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It, the market has al always times uh, time time its moves really nicely, uh, doesn't it? And uh, you know, everyone's just gonna wait for this jobs report to come out and then decide to either push it above the trend line or back below uh, one thirty-eight, uh, which is now going to be our key short-term support because previously it was resistance. So um, that's going to be very important. If uh, we get a breakout above the trend line, then uh, one thirty-nine, then one forty could be the next. A couple of targets on the upside. Would yeah. you agree with that? Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. So uh, we have uh, Yap Gizen asking us about uh, the Dow Jones Industrials Average and gold. And gold. Let's uh, let's talk about gold first because it's uh, kind of linked to the fixed markets and and the dollar. Um, and gold is um, you know before discussing gold, let's uh, have a look at uh, yields. Uh, just very quickly, you know, this is the 10-year U.S. yields. Um, they have uh, started to bounce off, but hasn't gone significantly higher. Uh, still holding below the 200-day average. So keep an eye on yields um, because as long as as well as the dollar, uh, gold is um, going to move on the back of uh, movements in the bond markets. Okay, so if yields weaken, that should be supporting gold. 
Um, in terms of uh, gold itself, uh, it has broken its bearish trend line, which yeah. is uh, important to note. Um, but it has stalled around it's stalled, yeah. 100 day uh, m moving average. Yeah, we've, we've been seeing uh, uh, lower highs and lower yeah. and higher lows. <laughs> yeah. So it's in this uh, triangle pattern uh, on a short term, uh, shorter it's... term uh, uh, chart. Yeah. Like on, on the hourly, it's in this triangle part pattern. That it, is, you mean like, uh, yeah, you can even see yeah, it on the yeah, daily, yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, this is normal, uh, typical price action in a NFP week um, or ahead of any major economic events. Um, yeah, so the market the is key question is, and yeah. bids and offers are uh, drying out. Yeah. So it could either break to the upside, obviously, or to the downside. I, it I would go bet... either way. Like yeah. It, Indeed. Yeah. Um, At this point in time, it's really like... It's, it's really it difficult re, it's to really put your money on data the data dependent. Yeah, and, very uh, data dependent. Oh, yeah. Overall, though, um, if the dollar were to go down, uh, sorry, if, if gold were to go down, it should have done so by now. What the hell is it doing all the way up here? Because when it broke down like this, yeah, it should have never come all the way back to here. Maybe it could have gone back to this level somewhere around here before resuming lower or even it higher. It never even stopped at these yeah. levels. I'm surprised. Um, it, it, yeah. it, it climbed to this level momentarily stalled and then it um, should have gone down it didn't it went a little bit higher again trapping the sellers um come down came down a bit never took out this low and then it went up a little bit more trapping further um tra trapping the sellers even more i reckon it's, it's, it's trapping the sellers i think it's going to do something like that and break out massively yeah. to the upside but then again i'm i've always well, been a bull on gold, on gold market <laughs> i'm so. gonna i'm gonna say state the obvious uh, uh i'm gonna take the other side so yeah. uh, at least one of us <laughs> gets it right um yeah um, I, I, I'm, I'm like i'm inclined to to believe that this number is gonna be great and yeah. uh at least short term we could short see term. this uh yeah. move, move lower Beyond short term, um, you know, in the longer term, if you think about gold um, as a uh, investment, I think uh, it, it remains undervalued, uh, judging by how loose central bank monetary policy has become since the pandemic. Now, the, if, you, yeah. if you look at, if you look back uh, in time, this was the pre-pandemic high uh, right here uh, at around one seventeen uh, hundred, right? Um, since then, uh, you know, we, we saw massive amounts of um, uh, stimulus come in, both from the fiscal and monetary policy points of view. Uh, and that drove yeah. gold initially to a new record high uh, above 2000 before it uh, started to drift lower and so, break down. So, so I, I, yeah, yeah, go on. So, so my so, point so, is uh, that relative to the equity markets, especially in the US, you know, gold hasn't done what it should have done, uh, which yeah. what I think it should have done. Uh, which All is right. to go significantly higher based on the fact that there's so much money flooding in the financial market. So for me, fundamentally, gold remains under, undervalued. Okay, so let me bring up uh, the other side of this argument. Go on. So uh, even though we had the most massive fiscal and monetary response in yeah. history, mm. And the, the dramatic uh, implosion in money supply from central banks and all that, gold couldn't hold above 2000. Like, uh, yeah. it, it, so, so even in these circumstances, gold didn't manage to rise much higher than its uh, previous high back Which in was here, uh, 2011. 2011. So that's a fair point. Yeah, my during all this time, like, why didn't we finally see this uh, implosion that uh, gold bugs have been talking about for well, over um, a decade? That's that's a fair point. Um, if you look at the monthly chart um, and look at how uh, much of a retracement we got from the low. Um, you know, let me just uh, get the uh, Fib levels there. You know, we 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 tagged the thirty eight point two percent Fib Fib trades before bouncing. So I, I, you know, this is not you know on the grand scheme of things, not a massive decline. It's, it's I think it's um it's a major consolidation before another significant rally. In in my view, 
um, that we could see. For example, if you look at uh, Bitcoin, um, just something um, completely different, you know, Bitcoin uh, rallied to a record high in 2017. This is a monthly chart of Bitcoin, by the way. Um, it then declined for several uh, months, uh, in, you know, a year, um, or, or, sorry, a few years even, before breaking out massively. Yeah, um, you know, I'm not comparing the two assets, but I'm just giving an example that um, that in the uh, long term, you know, consolidations can last several years before breaking out. And, and I think that could be the case uh, in so far as gold is concerned, that we are seeing a, a, a lengthy period of consolidation on the monthly time frame uh, before we see renewed um, strength. But uh, talking about the monthly chart, um, notice um, how the, we have this uh, doji light candle on the monthly time frame, which is potentially a, a, a bullish signal because um, it, it tried to break down, but uh, the market was able to recover all the way back from uh, to, to where it had started the month of August. And uh, so if we start to now uh, drift above the uh, previous month's highs, uh, we could see uh, some bids come into the market, driving gold prices back uh, up to the 2011 high uh, and potentially beyond uh, thereafter. But uh, obviously the, uh, the the line in the sand is the 38.2% Fibonacci retrace level. Um, but yeah, we, we've gone a little bit overboard. Um, I, I reckon personally that gold is going to break out uh, in the near future. Um, in the very short term, look, obviously today, it's it's all dependent on the outcome of the data, uh, which could send prices in either direction in, in the short term. Outlook. We have another request for the Dow Jones Industrial Average. So let's just uh, go yes. and have a look at that. Sure. Um, so let's go to indices, uh, find where the Dow is. So yeah, the Dow is um, still in consolidation mode, and in a very like, if you look at the mm. uh, shorter term, uh, for perhaps uh, an hourly chart or something, yeah, yeah, um, yeah the, we've we've been bouncing around this uh, uh, thirty five thousand five hundred level so okay. many times that yeah. I I feel like. Yeah, there is so much uh, stops above the, those levels. So yeah, we could it's see the very, very sharp move higher at some point. At least yeah. that that's how it looks like uh, here. Yeah, um, the more a, a level is tested, the more likely it is that it will break in the direction of the test. The thinking here is that um, if resistance is so strong here, why is the market not selling off? Um, well, it's, it's it's kind of bouncing from it, but it's not exactly selling off. So uh, yeah. I think it's it's creating a trap for the bears. It's uh, it, the market it makers are engineering a now, trap. Yeah. yeah. So I reckon, um, obviously, depending on the outcome of the data today, but um, in the longer term, I think it's going to break out and go to a new record high. Um, and, you know, going back to the daily, um, the trend is clearly bullish. There's no reason for me right now to be bearish on this market. Yes, the market is perhaps overbought or whatever. Um, but from a purely technical point of view, <laughs> we that haven't hasn't had that worked, bearish signal. Uh, yeah. uh, for, for about uh, a year and a half. Exactly. <laughs> As an um, argument. <laughs> The market Indeed. is overbought, no problem. No. <laughs> Let's keep <laughs> it, buying. It, it'll get even more overbought. <laughs> yeah. um, I so, think the, uh, the line in the sand it, for me is a break of this bullish trend line. Um, yeah, yeah, happens. yes. I was going to say that uh, it's a pretty important uh, trend line to watch out for. So, Emmanuel, uh, you, you're, you have two questions. Sorry, is the fundamental news strengthened the dollar so far? Well, no. um not really like the fundamental news have been uh, not that positive for the dollar lately and this is probably the last uh, kind of indicator as to where where the US economy is going and uh, yeah this is something to keep in mind so um, you need to 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 pay attention to the non-farm payrolls number if yeah. that comes out weaker, then I don't think there is anything that can strengthen the dollar in the near term. Yeah. Um, so so when, when you look at the dollar, you know, the data has been improving um, in the US, but it well, has also yes, been improving elsewhere as well. The, the, the surprise uh, index, the, the yeah. positive surprise, the surprise index has turned into negative territory. 
mm-hmm. and the um, the data from the US has not been as good lately. Yeah. That said, uh, I think that we're in for a bumpy ride in uh, in the third quarter and in the fourth quarter of this year, but. That's not related to the NFP. Uh, that's something that we're going to be discussing next week during our weekly webinar. Yeah. And uh, I was going to say, if you guys have any other questions, uh, shoot them out uh, as we are nearing our uh, time limit here. Yeah. So and there is a, another question. Uh, I think we, uh, Emmanuel, second question about goal. We 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 talked about that. So we are bullish. I I'm bullish certainly, and a technical analysis point of view looks bullish. But uh, Victor has an alternative view, uh, which may play, play out that way. Who knows? Um, and in the short term, would be interested to know your forecast on where will be the next resistance level or psychological level for the Dow, or, Jones, Dow Jones after it breaks. Uh, 35,000. Okay. Well, I think 36,000. Uh, obviously, the previous high around 35,700 or yeah. something like that. If you yeah. can draw a vertical trend um, line on that, on, on uh, where, sorry, sorry, a horizontal, okay. yeah, a horizontal trend line there. Um, so, so one thing about these resistance levels, guys, um, when the market is trending higher, like making higher highs and higher lows, um, and it's trading at um, uh, uncharted territories, like rec- record levels. Like um, we don't think of uh, upside levels as resistance per se. We think of them as bullish objectives, where we may see some profit taking around and where potentially the market could turn from. So it's not a reason yeah. to sell the market uh, short at those levels. It's more like levels to take profit around if you're long, yeah? or don't yeah. go long around those levels if you're already not in it. Wait for a pullback. Um, that kind of thing. Um, once the market starts to break down, when you have your bear signal, then uh, you can think of resistance levels as levels that were previously support, which could then offer in, uh, turn into resistance. So uh, I would be, uh, you know, obviously there, there are different ways to trade the market. Some people average in and, and so on. Um, but right now it, it's yeah. very risky we to short the market. We advise so, you against that. Yeah. <laughs> Never average a losing position. Yeah. First rule of trading. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. And uh, don't go against the trend if you do that, uh, especially when it's, it's really strong. Um, but nevertheless, you could use Fibonacci extension levels um, as a means of finding some re- um, potential targets. So notice if uh, you draw... Uh, your pips from a significant high to a significant low, you'll have the extension levels. Notice how the market came very close to the 127.2 extension before pulling back sharply. Uh, the 161.8 extension is all the way here at um, 36,300 something. But if you're uh, a shorter term trader, you can draw it from this swing, from this high to this low. And the 127.2 extension comes in at 35,925, uh, uh, which is going to be the next level where I would expect to see some profit taking around. So if that's your question, that's my answer to the, um, 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 in, in so far as where we might see some uh, weakness in, in the Dow. Guys, we have run out of time. Thank you so much for your questions. It's been a pleasure to um, have been able to provide you uh, our focus on the NFP and analysis on the charts. Um, I wish you all the best of luck. Uh, be, please be careful out there. Uh, you know, don't don't jump into any yeah, trades. This uh, number could be really crazy, so be, beware. Yeah, and uh, you know, take uh, uh, trade um, you know with with caution. Um, don't over leverage. And um, yeah, just be careful. And uh, hopefully we'll see you in our regular webinars um, um, on on Tuesday. If you don't know about them, um, uh, let me just quickly remind you that if you go to our home uh, page, thinkmarkets.com, go to market analysis, live webinars. Here you will see a list of upcoming webinars. So today we've done the uh, uh, NFP preview on um, Tuesday of next week. We have our regular live market analysis uh, sessions. And then Victor, is going to be identifying key Forex market drivers on 9th of September. So make sure you join us for those webinars by clicking on the register button. See you guys next time. Take care.
See you. Take care.